Welcome to Business 214, Fun with Advanced Excel. Hey, we're in our workbook, Business 214, Chapter 2 in Charts from Graven. Hey, this is V-Blog. What is this? This is V-Blog 7, I think. 6, 7? Hey, Chapter 2, we got to talk about statistics. Hey, why in the world do we have to have statistics? Oh, sometimes we have to have averages because we need one number that represents all the data points. So we have a typical value to talk about, like sales. Instead of talking about all the individual numbers, you calculate average and go, hey, the average sales are last year, blah, blah, blah. Hey, the other reason is <clears throat> we need to uh, measures of variation like standard deviation what te which tell us how good our average is or how representative our average is we also need statistics majorly to do um, inferential statistics where you take samples and then make use the the results from the sample to say something about the population and then estimate under future uncertain uh, situations estimate some answer like should we market this new product all right hey in this little chapter two we're just going to talk about averages and standard deviation and a bunch of other cool things too let's get busy sales department one and two let's calculate an average I'm going to click in cell B22 equals average notice the pop the drop down arrow if on um, the drop down list of functions if you down arrow and then hit tab um, it'll automatically put this function in. Now, I'm going to click the up arrow and then hold shift and then up arrow like that. Alternatively, you could have said equals AVE, down arrow, tab, up arrow, and then control, hold control and shift and up arrow, but it would go one too far. It's got the label, so now I'd let go of control and just hold shift and down arrow. Control Enter, it calculates the average. Now I'm going to copy this because that's a relative cell reference. I'm going to point to my fill handle and with my angry rabbit, click and drag. I'm going to click in that cell and hit F2 just to verify. No way, they're both 290. What is going on here? The average, they must be the same. And I don't think so. Let's take a look over here because we want to see the clearest way to understand standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is beautiful. It calculates the average deviation of the data points from its mean. But visually, it's, more, it's easier to understand than that earlier description. Here's the mean. Here's all the data points. See all the red ones? Much more spread out, right? Here's the blue ones. Here's the average. They're both 290, but look at the blue ones. They're not as spread out. That's what standard deviation tells you. The smaller the standard deviation, the less spread out the data is. The larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data points are as compared to the average. Ah, but look at this. Does this average, the blue one, represent its data points more fairly than this one. Remember, the whole reason we have an average is so we have one typical value to talk about all the values. But if that one value, typical value that we use to talk about all the values, isn't doesn't represent its data points fairly, then we don't want to use it. <coughs> or at least have a caveat that says, hey, the variation is huge, the spread is huge, the range between the max and the min is huge. So there it is. Uh, let's calculate standard deviation for both set uh, sales department data one and sales department data two. Now, this is a sample, so we're going to use, um, and I'm going to blow this function up, equals STDEV, open parentheses. There it is right there. I'm going to click on the uh, B21, control shift up arrow, and then I'm going to hold shift and down arrow. That highlights just those above it, and then control enter. Should have tabbed. I should have tabbed there. I'm going to click F2 and then tab. That's what I should have done there. Oh, no, I shouldn't have. I'm going to hit F2. Control Enter is what I should have done because I want to immediately copy that over and calculate that for Sales Department 2. Hey, I'm going to click in this cell, Control Roll, and hit F2 to see. Oh, yeah, look. It is. It's highlighting the right data because it was here looking here. Relatively, this formula right here for Sales Department 2 was looking you know, this many up and this many over, right? So when we copied it over, it's still looking this many up and this many this many up and that many over, relative cell reference. Hey, which one of these standard deviations is smaller? This one. That means the data, this average represents its data points more fairly. 
um, another way to think about it is, oh, this one's bigger. The spread is bigger. Hey, let's go to our sheet tab called statistics. Statistics. We want to calculate three types of averages. No way. And you can read this here. These are the description of mean, median, and mode. Hey, what is the average in Excel? It adds them up and then divides by the count. Median finds the one in the middle, and mode finds the, finds the one that occurs most frequently. Now let's scroll down. Let's see our data here. We're going to do a bunch of cool things in this sheet tab. Oh, it's all the way down here. Now I'd like to put my cursor somewhere in this little table. Field name, field name, dollar sales, sales rep. There's a bunch of data. You go all the way down. I could put my cursor somewhere and control down arrow to jump to the bottom. And I can see it at row 115. There's the last bit of data. I'm going to control up arrow. Now I want to convert this to a new Excel 2007 table. So I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut. Instead of going insert table group table, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut. Remember, earlier versions, instead of an Excel table, it was called Excel list. So Control L still works. I'm going to click Escape. Control T is the new keyboard shortcut. Oh, it says, there's the data. Did I get it right? I think it did. Um, do I have headers? Yeah, headers, headers. Click OK. No way, it turns into a table. Now I'm going to click in these cells. And I'm going to go to the Home ribbon and the uh, Editing group, the button eraser, and say Clear Formats. Oh, I had some formatting that was there beforehand. But when I added the table feature, it put the format. It, we couldn't see the format. Um, so I got rid of that old format, and then the table format comes to the front. Now, the beauty of having a table is this range here, we can refer to using table nomenclature. Table nomenclature. Now, let's go see what the name of this table is and figure out what this nomenclature is. I'm going to, oh, look, there's a context sensitive ribbon. Table tools, design. I'm going to click on design. Hey, look, it tells us the table name. By the way, if your cursor's out here, uh oh. Uh-oh, it went away. Put your cursor there. Uh-oh, it came back. Hey, that's a context-sensitive ribbon. Click on Design. Clip in this um, names. I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to type SD, Enter. Hey, wait a second. Let me click back. Oh, there it is, SD. So it becomes SD. It's much easier to type SD than. Now, let's go ahead and do average equals AVE. I see that um, the drop-down comes. I'm going to hit the down arrow and then Tab. Fast typers can probably type it out, average, open parentheses faster than you can hit AVE, down arrow, tab. Nevertheless, now we want to um, wait a second. Our table nomenclature, that's the whole table. We're going to learn something really cool here. Type SD. And here's where you're just going to have to learn a new way of doing formulas if you're doing um, table nomenclature. You've got to remember the square bracket. In Access, when we did queries in Business 216, Square brackets are what we had to put around the field names to do calculations. So here in Excel, what they've done is they've allowed you to name a table. And then if you type a square bracket, a secret little list pops up. As long as there's a table right there. Square name, it has the field names. It also has these other things like you can uh, average everything or count everything, just the data, just the headers, just the totals, just this row. But we want. Sale. So I'm going to um, hit Tab. Notice it's the top one, and it's highlined, so I just hit Tab. Then i got to do a square bracket, close parentheses. That is table nomenclature. SD is the table. The field is in square bracket, sales. And there it is, 6610 and 67 cents. All right, now let's do um, the next average. Now, wait a second. Why in the world? I thought we just had average, which is in statistics called mean. Why do we have median and mode? Hey, the reason why is because, remember, an average is to get a good typical value, which means it represents all of its data points. Think about this in real estate. If you have a $10 million and a $5 million house, and you calculate an average on a bunch of $250,000 houses, but you have some $10 million numbers in there, what does it do? Oh, it makes the average look higher than you would want. So to get a more typical value, we take a median. What is a median? Hey, guess what? Scroll down here. It actually would take all these numbers 
sort them from biggest to smallest to smallest to biggest, and then find the one in the middle. If it's an even number of records, it takes the two in the middle and divides them by two. If it's an odd, then it just takes the one in the middle. Now, without having to sort them and count with our fingers and stuff like that, we'll just do median equals ME. I see that um, there's a drop down for median, so I'm going to hit tab. Then I'm going to type SD and a square bracket. Remember, you got to learn square bracket for table nomenclature. No way. Look at that. It pops up with sales. I'm going to hit tab, square bracket, close parentheses. This median will find the one in the middle. And look at that. It means um, when the average is bigger or the mean is bigger than the median, it means there's a couple bigger values pulling this average out. Now, I suspect for this set of data, it's probably not a big deal. But if we were to go down here and put in, uh, the, for Megan, the first one, she had a $10 million sale. $10 million sale. Then you could see the dramatic difference. Sorry, this is a better typical value than this one, because poor Megan, the super salesman, she was just uh, selling a lot of stuff. I'm going to control Z. And there you can see it und undid it. Uh, let's go down to mode. Now, this set of data really isn't for mode. Mode is when you're counting, like you have uh, rate your soft drink good, uh, uh, OK, good, and excellent. You would want mode because it would count the one that occurred most frequently. So if good came out most frequently, meaning people check that box the most, that's what mode is for. But let's try it anyway. Mode, open parentheses. And I'm going to type SD square bracket. And I'm going to hit tab, square bracket, close parentheses. Not available. That's because there isn't a duplicate value. There isn't one. There is no mode. Hey, let's go down here and do a little trick. Let's say uh, Megan, let's click on this first one, equals. And she sold exactly what Michelle did there. That way we'll force the issue. Hey, look. Uh, oh, look, there it is. If we were to come here and say equals count if, open parentheses, the range is SD, square bracket, tab, because we see our, our field, square bracket, uh, and then comma this, we could count how many there were. And that would be one way to, uh, you can see the formula up there, one way to count in our set if a mode comes up. Um, and it's a relevant measure. But for us, forget it. Mode is not really a set of data. In statistics, um, when you have good, or OK, good, and um, uh, excellent for your measures, that's called nominal data. And oops, what happened? Oh, oh there it is. That's called nominal data, and that's when you use mode. But for us, it doesn't work. Hey, I'm going to go down and. Uh, Click Control Z, and that's going to get rid of that, and then Control Z to get Megan's value back there. OK, so not available. That is the mode. In your um, homework for Business 214, there's a great example of when you can use mode. All right, um, now we need to calculate standard deviation. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Oh, it's just going to say how good our average is, our mean. All right, you ready? Equals STDEV. Notice I could have hit tab, open parentheses. SD, square bracket, tab, square bracket, close parentheses. Enter. Oh, so the standard deviation is 3,000. Now, uh, we don't really need to do this one. This is in a statistics class. But there is another uh, function called AVEDEV, -E -E which calculates the mean deviation. Standard deviation is by far the most common. Hey, let's calculate our max equals max, open parentheses, SD square bracket, tab, square bracket, close parentheses, enter. Mm, enter. 12,000 is the max. Let's do our min equals min, open parentheses, SD, square brackets, tab, square brackets, close parentheses, enter. And the range would be the difference between the max and the min. Oh, yeah, the biggest and the smallest equals this minus this. That is a huge range. That means there's a, this was the smallest sale. This was the biggest, 11,000. So maybe that's not so bad um, standard deviation there. Uh, let's count um, the number of sales. And we want to differentiate between count and count uh. Count counts numbers. Count uh counts non-blanks. 
equals count open parentheses. And I want to count all the sales. So I'm going to say SD square bracket tab square bracket. I'm tired of keeping typing in. I should have done this a long time ago. I'm going to, in my formula bar up here, or, uh, formula bar up here, or in my cell, I'm going to highlight SD square bracket sales and control C, and I'm going to use that later. Uh, close parentheses and how many sales we had? Count. Now, this count is going to give us the same uh, number, but we're going to count words, which is very important to know how to do sometimes. Equals count, uh, open parentheses, control V. Close parentheses, enter, 57. One last thing. Uh, we want to do skew equals skew, open parentheses, control V. Skew, guess what? This is really cool. Remember up here we had uh, a bigger mean than our median. That meant there was a couple big values pulling the average up. Skew tells us whether it gets pulled up or down. If skew comes out positive, we know it's getting pulled up. If it gets uh, comes out negative, we know it's come gets pulled down. It goes from negative 3 all the way to 3. Enter. Oh, so it's just a little teeny bit. That's a very small number. It could be all the way up to negative 3. Hey, when we oh, look at this total. I don't know how to spell or anything. When we come back in our next V blog, we'll see how to do some ranking. And actually, um, off to the side of this worksheet, I have some cool uh, extra examples for rank. But rank is an excellent function that will tell us um, th the rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of the highest sales. All right, see you next V blog.